when we involve ourselves in trade, there are two sides to the trade story. Typically, we talk about trade as if it's just exchanging goods between countries, but there's more to it than that. Very rarely do we find a barter system of trade taking place in any manner, let alone at the international scale. There's almost always a financial transaction involved. So if you buy something from China, then there's an exchange of your money for their goods. When we talk about trade in the context of gross domestic product, however, we're only talking about net exports. Our exports minus our imports, and that's the trade of goods and services. That does not include the exchange of financial assets. That's a different category of trade, but those two things, the financial assets and the physical goods and services, are intricately linked together. The financial side of things is referred to as net capital outflow. And that is the foreign assets that domestic citizens purchase. By assets, we mean things like stocks and bonds and currency. So if you're in the United States and you're a U.S. citizen, all the stock that you buy in Toyota or the euros that you purchase or the, the um, bonds of, say, uh, of Germany, you buy those things. Those aren't products. Those are financial assets, and those are added positively to what we call the net capital outflow or the NCO. But since it's a net number, we have to subtract something. And in this case, what we're going to do is subtract the, the U.S. assets that are purchased by foreign citizens. So if someone from Greece buys a U.S. government bond, or someone from China buys a bunch of U.S. dollars, that's going to be subtracted from the U.S. net capital outflow. So it's the net capital outflow are the foreign financial assets purchased by domestic citizens minus the domestic financial assets purchased by foreigners. Now, this net capital outflow can manifest, manifest itself in two different ways. The first way is what we call direct foreign investment, and that includes um, the purchase of financial assets that are going to be involved in the production of something. So for example, if Nike sets up a factory in Indonesia to make shoes, and they're going to be directly controlling those assets, that's direct foreign investment. The other side is something called portfolio investment, and that is when you buy something that's not going to give you a direct say in how things function, but more of an indirect or more of a passive position. This would be the purchase of stocks in foreign companies or government bonds in foreign countries. You're not going to actually be running those countries, but you still have a financial stake to, those, uh, to the company or, or to the government from which you purchase those financial assets. Net capital outflow can be either positive or negative. If it's positive, that means that the domestic citizens are buying more foreign assets than foreigner, foreigners are buying of domestic assets. Again, we'll take a look at this from the perspective of being from the United States. If, as a country, U.S. citizens are buying more foreign assets than foreigners are buying from the United States, then our net capital outflow would be positive. Now, if you have a very stable country, then you're going to probably have a lot of people around the world wanting to buy your assets, which isn't a bad thing. It's just going to mean that your net capital outflow number is going to turn negative. If domestic citizens buy fewer foreign assets than foreigners are buying domestic assets, then the net capital outflow would be negative. So if there's a lot of people who want to buy U.S. financial assets because they're a stable um, instrument, then net capital outflow becomes negative. Now this all ties together when we look at net exports and net capital outflow in a very kind of neat, tidy package. In fact, net exports are always going to end up being equal to net capital outflow in terms of dollars. Let's take a look at an example here. Let's say that you are um, producing something in your basement um, and you want to sell that in Mexico. Uh, let's say you're producing sort of the next generation Snuggie and you want to sell that in Mexico. 
and you do fabulously well. You sell this, um, this product and you make, say, a million dollars. Now, for the United States, well, let's start with you. For you, you're going to be paid in pesos. Pesos are the currency of Mexico. And so as you send these products to Mexico, the U.S. net exports go up because we're selling more things across borders. And the net capital outflow increases as well because you are being paid in pesos, which means now you own more of a foreign country's financial assets. So net exports go up and net capital outflow goes up by the same amount. Now, you may not want pesos so much. So you're sitting on this pile of a million dollars worth of pesos. You say to yourself, well, I can't go down to McDonald's and spend pesos, so what am I going to do with this money? Well, you have a couple of options, both of which are going to keep net exports equal to net capital outflow. One thing you could do would be to buy more Mexican assets. Instead of being paid in pesos, maybe you want to buy Mexican government bonds or uh, stock in a company, in a cell phone company in Mexico. That doesn't really change the whole equation here because you're just transforming those pesos into another financial asset. But that's one of your options with your pesos. You can buy a different kind of foreign asset. The second option would be to, would be to buy something made in Mexico. So maybe you want some you know, authentic Mexican salsa, or you want some um, you know want some uh, some clothing made in Mexico. Now what you're doing is you're going to take your pesos and you're going to trade those pesos for a product that's going to be sent to you. Now by giving up those pesos, you're basically giving back the foreign asset. And so the U.S.'s net capital outflow goes down. And in the process of buying a product made in Mexico, you're importing some goods and so imports are going to increase, causing the net export number to go down as well. So if you buy a product made in Mexico, net exports fall and net capital outflow falls, which once again keeps our equation equal. So what we've seen here is that when it comes to trade, there's two parts to trade really. One is the actual exchange of goods and services. The other side is the actual exchange of financial assets. Sometimes it's just currency, other times it is the purchase of stocks and bonds and other kinds of financial assets from another country, but there's always two parts to trade. 